In Zambia is a doctor named Emmanuel Makasa. Makasa is so used to power outages in his hospital that he often performs surgery in the dark, using the torchlight on his phone. His story is one of the many reasons why Africa is in dire need of consistent and reliable power. In this video, we'll explore how planting solar panels out into the sea could be a revolutionary game changer for the continent. And if the solar power is properly unleashed to its full potential, it could even power the entire planet. Africa's power issues vary in different parts of the continent. While Zambia suffers from power outages, there is a startling amount of people with no access to electricity at all. One of the most alarming statistics today is that 600 million people in Africa live without access to electricity, and 900 million people are without access to clean cooking fuels. To put this into context, the United States has a population of only 330 million. And even for the more advanced economies in Africa, energy is still in huge demand. Research has shown that Nigeria's population is increasing at a rate that, by the year 2100, it will have a bigger population than China. The study also expected huge population growth in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Tanzania. So to grow these economies and to facilitate the greater number of people living there, the energy supply needs to be ramped up rapidly. However, there is one big problem – climate change. Most African countries signed the Paris Climate Agreement, where they promised to lower their emissions and reliance on fossil fuels. So while building coal power plants makes sense economically, it does not make sense with regard to the climate. So you're probably thinking that the solution to Africa's problem is staring at them right in the face, quite literally from the beaming hot sun that shines all year round. And this brings us to yet another startling statistic. Only 3% of Africa's energy comes from solar. And rather bizarrely, countries in Europe, where there is much less sunshine, attribute 7% of their energy to solar power. So why hasn't Africa embraced solar power? The first problem, like most things, is money. The reason why countries with less sunshine produce more solar energy than African countries is mainly because they are wealthier countries that have more money to invest in this energy source. When sunlight hits a solar panel, it creates energy. However, the energy from this solar panel needs infrastructure to move from the solar panel to an electrical grid system. It also needs to be stored so it can be used at night when the sun doesn't shine. According to Irina Slav at oilprice.com, many African countries simply lack transmission infrastructure extensive enough to accommodate utility-scale solar and wind installations economically. After all, a company cannot just build a solar farm at a random spot only because it is near the existing infrastructure. Solar and wind farms require optimal conditions to perform well. Since the pandemic, many African countries have undergone a recession and simply can't afford to finance new solar energy projects. As well as being costly, solar farms can also be a risky investment. Extreme weather, such as hurricanes, blizzards, tornadoes, hailstorms, and wildfires pose severe risks to solar farms. Solar Power World reported that summer hail in Texas in 2022 caused over $300 million in damage to solar fields. Even in a country like Kenya, where they have created infrastructure to accommodate solar energy, other factors were at play. Toby Gill, CEO of Intelligent Power Generation, said, As of two years ago, the cost for a microgrid provider to connect one household to their grid was around $1,000. When you then consider the average customer is paying less than $1 to $2 per day for their electricity use, the payback period for these energy companies becomes untenable. It is the fact that the cost of deploying and installing the electricity infrastructure is too high relative to the revenue potential of the customers. But as well as money, and perhaps an even bigger issue, is land. 
Sometimes, there are protected areas that cannot be cleared for solar energy farms, and sometimes densely populated areas, particularly around big cities, do not have enough space to allocate these farms. According to researchers from the Australian National University, it takes about 70 square kilometers of solar panels to provide full energy to a million affluent people. So, for a city like Johannesburg, which has a population of 3.7 million, you would need 259 square kilometers of land for solar panels. For the entire country of South Africa, you would need 4,151 square kilometers of land. And for the continent of Africa, you would need 85,120 square kilometers. So, imagine a solar wind farm the size of the UAE. But this is where offshore solar panels can be a real game changer. Instead of taking up large swaths of land, they could simply have millions of solar panels in the ocean. This will obviously be most beneficial to cities situated near the sea. So cities like Lagos, Durban, and Algiers could have huge solar panels planted in the nearby ocean. And inland African countries could potentially use these panels in lakes too. And believe it or not, offshore solar power is more efficient. According to scientists from the Copernicus Institute at Utrecht University, offshore solar generates 12.96% more power per year than onshore. Interestingly, they found that seawater functions as a natural cooling system, and this improves efficiency. While storms are common across the ocean, the Australian National University found certain parts of the Earth with incredibly still and calm waters. The study found that two areas close to the equator were ideal for offshore solar, one in Indonesia and one in the Gulf of Guinea in West Africa. As well as the abundance of sunlight, there are also calm seas, which means that there is very little chance of the panels being damaged. Within these calm waters, waves never get any larger than 4 meters high. In fact, the waters around Indonesia, which have similar conditions as those around Africa, have not received a storm for over 40 years. So the hazardous conditions, like those experienced in Texas, should not happen and make solar energy a much less risky investment. But here's where the findings from the Australian National University become mind-blowing. Their recent study says equatorial Africa has enormous scope for floating PV or photovoltaic panels. There is potential for 11,000 terawatt hours of floating solar generation from regions that do not experience waves larger than 4 meters in height or winds stronger than 15 meters per second. This is enough for 550 million affluent people, about one third of Africa's current population. When you travel further out into the Gulf of Guinea, the sea experiences slightly stronger winds and rougher waves, and requires a bit more maintenance and stronger installations. However, if you expand the number of offshore solar panels out to this area, where the waves reach 6 meters high, the potential is almost unthinkable. According to the study, if the tolerable maximum wave height is 6 meters, then the available resource increases to 300,000 terawatt hours per annum, which is enough for 15 billion affluent people. So essentially, this could power the entire planet, with an extra 7.2 billion people to spare. Offshore solar power is not without its problems, however. Salt corrosion and marine fouling are issues, as well as their impact on ocean life and fishing. Nonetheless, the study says that by mid-century, about a billion people in these countries will rely mostly on solar energy, which is causing the fastest energy change in history. At the end of the day, Africa's energy problem is complicated and multifaceted. And while offshore solar energy is not a quick fix, it certainly could have a lot of potential. In the short term, solar energy could solve issues such as blackouts and access to electricity. In the long term, it could be the blueprint for a bright and sustainable future. Thanks for watching.